Hey, and welcome to my kitchen. Today's relatable recipe is lasagna. Um, I love lasagna. My mom made lasagna a lot growing up. It's one of my favorite recipes to make. My family loves it. So I'm gonna show you how I do kind of a half homemade, half not version of lasagna. And then I actually make two small pans, uh, one with no vegetables and one with some onions and peppers because my husband and, I, husband and I like the onions and peppers. Kids don't, so I make two small pans. You don't have to do that, obviously. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use canned or jarred sauce, but we're gonna add to it. We're gonna add some, some different seasoning things to it to make it a little bit more our own. So I've got it about a pound and a quarter, pound and a half. You could do either a pound or a pound and a half of ground beef, ground turkey, you could do half and half. And I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna brown it in a large deep skillet because I'm gonna add the sauce to this once the meat is browned. So let's go ahead and get that started and then we'll start boiling our hot water for the lasagna noodles as well. Okay, so I've added a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to my ground beef as it browns, and I've got it on medium heat. Then I filled up my stock pot about halfway with water, and I'm going to put that on high heat, medium high, to bring that water to a boil. Because that's what we're going to put our lasagna noodles in. And while this meat is browning, I'm going to be chopping up some onions and bell pepper to go in the pan that's for my husband and I, because we like those chopped veggies. So I'm just gonna do a rough chop on my onions and bell pepper. I've already got them sliced up. And I'm just going back with my knife and just doing a rough chop to make sure there's no really huge pieces. But even if there are, it's not a big deal. These are all going in the same pan and I'm gonna soften them and caramelize them a little bit before I add them to my red sauce. I'm gonna stir my ground beef a little bit. I'm gonna chop that up. I'm actually going to turn my heat up a little bit, just a hair above medium, to speed up this process. Just make sure you keep chopping. You don't want any big chunks of meat unless you're doing like a meatball lasagna, then maybe you could do something like that. But in lasagna, you normally want a smaller mince, dice, whatever you call it, meat, uh, ground beef mixture. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper and salt to my ground beef. So we're just gonna do a sprinkle of black pepper, a sprinkle of salt, and then just continue to mix it and brown that up. While that's finishing, I am going to put a little bit of olive oil into a small saute pan, and I'm gonna start caramelizing and softening up my onions and bell peppers. And I'm gonna put that on medium low. And I'm just going to dump these in. I'm just going to stir my peppers and onions a bit. Add a little salt and pepper to them. And let them soften up. Okay, I think my meat's about done. So I'm going to grab a strainer and I am going to, I'm going to pour off some of this grease. All right, so I've got a, just a regular strainer here and just a metal bowl, and I'm gonna pour my ground beef into this strainer so that all the grease gets caught in the bowl. Turn my heat down. And I'm just gonna pour that directly in that strainer. And put my pan back on the heat. I do stir around a little bit to make sure all the grease falls off. And then I'm gonna dump it right back into that pan. All right, now I'm going to just stir that back around, and I am going to start adding, adding my seasonings. So, I'm going to add some dry seasoning, and in this container here, I have a mix of things. So, I do have some onion powder, I have some red pepper flakes, I have basil, I have oregano, and so I'm just going to sprinkle all this out. I'll have the measurements and full recipe in the notes at the end of the video. But I am gonna dump all this on at once and kind of stir it around. And then I'm gonna add in some minced garlic. And you wanna add up roughly a teaspoon of the minced garlic. And I'm just using a pre-minced garlic. You can also mince it yourself, whatever you wanna do. 
Put that in. Stir that around. And you never want to burn your garlic. You have to be careful with garlic. So you want to make sure it's on low heat. And it's not just sitting on the bottom of the pan on its own for very long. It will burn. All right, so now that I've got all those mixed in, I'm going to add some red sauce. And I'm just using the ragu, traditional, old world style. You can add whatever you like. It could be cheap brand, it could be expensive brand, you can make your own, whatever you're going to do. But you're going to add two full jars. And to keep this from splattering all over you, it is best to pour it over a wooden spoon into the pan. Dump it all in there. You're going to stir your ground beef into your red sauce. smells so good at this point. I love the smell of onions and green pepper on the stove top. It is fabulous. All right, so I've got that mixed in. Now I'm going to bring it up a little bit above low, medium low, I guess, closer to low if you have the possibility, because you do want to bring this to a simmer, but it's going to pop and sizzle and come right out of that pan all over you. So at this point, I would suggest putting a lid on your pan to keep that from getting on you. And then I'm gonna give my onions, green pepper a quick stir. And I actually am gonna put a lid on those as well. They'll soften a little bit faster. At this point, if you want to thin your sauce out a little bit, just to stretch it, which I am going to do, I'm actually going to pour a little bit of water in each of the bottom of these, just to get the rest of that red sauce out and add it directly into my mixture. And I did not measure the water that's in these. I just basically put it up like to here, probably the last fourth, maybe even sixth of the jar, just to coat the bottom where that extra sauce is sitting. And I'm gonna pour those in directly. Maybe even swirl around, get all that out there. I'm gonna stir that in. And your sauce is pretty much ready to go. Now, if, it was, if I was making this just for my husband and I, I would be adding those onions and green peppers directly into the sauce before I layer my lasagna. But because I'm not gonna be doing that, I'm actually going to, when I go to layer my ingredients into my lasagna pans, I'm gonna sprinkle the sauteed onions and peppers onto ours after the red sauce. And you'll see what I'm talking about. And our water is not quite to a boil, so I'm gonna give it another few minutes, and then we're gonna add the lasagna noodles into the boiling water. So my water is at a simmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my lasagna noodles now. And I usually, if you were doing a nine by 13 pan, I would say about nine noodles, because you'll do three on each layer, you'll do three thin layers. But, since so I'm doing two small pans, I think I'm gonna do 12, and we'll see what that gets us. And I just lay them in there individually, kind of back and forth so they don't stick together too much. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to my boiling water. And when I'm working with lasagna noodles, I like to use tongs, but you make sure you get the silicone covered tongs because once those noodles start to soften up, the metal ones can really rip them in half. So I choose to use the silicone just to keep them moved around. And it also help when you have to go take them out layer to layer them. This is much softer and easier on your noodles. I'm going to check my sauce. You want to stir the sauce occasionally because it will stick to the bottom of your pan as it gets hot. Looking good. And again to my onions and green peppers. Ooh, this smells so good. And now we wait for the noodles to be done. And those are going to take about 8 to 10 minutes, which will give the sauce and the onions and peppers a little bit more time as well, but they need to simmer and to soften up. So I'll meet you back here to layer. Okay, so I've got my noodles softened. They're a little bit al dente, like they're not quite done, and that's okay because you're gonna put them with all of this ingredients and you're gonna layer them 
and you're going to put them in the oven to bake. So it's going to finish baking in there. So I've got those ready. I just turned my sauce off. It's been boiling for about 10 minutes and I stirred it consistently on and off to make sure it didn't stick to the bottom of the pan. And then I've got my onions and I've got my green pepper and they're softened and they're browned a little bit and caramelized and they smell amazing. Those are ready to go. Now for the cheese, I don't do ricotta. I don't do cottage cheese. My family does not like that layer. So we just do layers of mozzarella and then we cover the top in mozzarella with Parmesan mixed in. That's our version of lasagna. But of course, if you want the ricotta, you could totally layer that in. Okay, so let's layer up the lasagna. As you can see, I've got two eight by eight, nine by nine-ish stone baking pans. You can use casserole dish, you can use a cake pan, it honestly doesn't matter. Um, these, it doesn't stick, which is what I like about them, and they're nice and heavy. I feel like it gives me a nice crispy coat around the edges against the stone, so they're perfect. So I'm gonna turn my water off and we're gonna start layering. Now you're gonna to wanna to get like a soup spoon or a fairly deep spoon to ladle your sauce. Okay, so in the bottom of each pan, I'm gonna do about half of a spoonful, half a ladleful of sauce, just right in the middle. And I'm just gonna spread that around. It's just gonna let the noodles, the bottom layer of noodles kind of stick to your pan. And that's be perfect, just kind of move it around a little bit. So with those tongs, the silicone tongs, we're going to grab one noodle, let it drip for a minute in the pan, and you're going to layer that across. Now these are going to be a little long for my pan. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I love lasagna noodles, so I'm just going to fold mine up around the top and give me a nice little edge. And it's really hot, so you're probably gonna burn your fingers if you have to grab it like I just did. Okay. All right, so I've got three lasagna noodles in the bottom of each pan. So I'll have two layers of lasagna noodles per pan. If you're doing like a nine by 13, I would say do three layers of three. Okay, so once your lasagna noodles are in, you're going to do some sauce. And you wanna make sure you get some meat in each one. And you're just gonna probably, I'm guessing around two spoonfuls, two ladlefuls of sauce will be good per layer. Do that in both pans. Okay. Once your sauce is in, then you're gonna cover it with your cheese. So we're gonna use mozzarella. And as you can see here, I just have the pre-shredded cheese of mozzarella. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. Now this pan is what I'm gonna use the onions and green pepper for. So this is the point where I'm going to do a layer of the sauteed onions and peppers. I'm gonna to try to evenly distribute them across. Take the back of my tongs here and move them around. Okay. Now we just do another layer just like the first one. layers in, I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese to the top. Now these both are going to go in an oven preheated to 350. 
I'm going to put one on the top rack, one on the bottom, and rotate them in about 20 minutes so that you make sure that the cheese on one does not get darker than the cheese on the other. So, like I said, I'll probably rotate them in about 20 minutes. It may take closer to 30 to 35 minutes for them to cook all the way through. Just watch them. You want all the cheese to be nice and melted on top and a little bit brown on the edges, and they should be good to go. Okay, so both lasagnas have come out of the oven, and I had them bake at 350, and they actually went for about 40 minutes. It could take 50 in your oven, it could take 30. Really watch it. And as you can see, it has like a nice browned, cheesy look to the top of it. This one, you can see those onions and peppers popping through. Delicious. So I'm gonna scoop some out of this pan, the one without the onions and peppers, just so you can see. Oh, it's so crusty on the edges. I love it. It's gonna be really, really Oh, almost not gonna make it. There we go. Yum. Get that extra sauce in there. Now, I will say, this literally just came out of the oven. So if you let it sit in the pan for about 10 minutes or so, it'll actually hold shape a little bit better than that just did. It won't fall apart so easily, and it'll give you a prettier slice. But we really don't care how pretty it is in our house. We want it hot out of the oven, and this is gonna be so good. The best way to serve this, of course, is if you have garlic bread. I actually have some ciabatta bread, and I'm going to slice and put a little bit of garlic butter on there to serve tonight, maybe cut up a salad. It's going to be fantastic. So I hope your family enjoys this. Really make it your own. I'll include all of the links to the different tools that I used in the show notes, and then at the, after the video, I'll have the full recipe with the different measurements and the brands that I used. But really just choose your favorite ingredients, your favorite brands of sauce or homemade sauce, and make it your own and your family will love it. And if you are doing two pans like this, you could easily freeze one. I would not do it in a stone pan if you're gonna do that, but you could do this in like an aluminum foil disposable pan and freeze it. You could also layer it before you bake it. So cook the noodles down, cook the ground beef, do all your, your layering and then freeze it. And then the, day, the night before, let it thaw in the refrigerator overnight, bake it the next day. That would be fantastic. Great, great freezer option. So I hope you enjoyed the lasagna. Have a great night.